have the authority and I have the ability to do what God has called me to do. I have the authority and I have the ability to do what God has called me to do. In 2019, I spent the majority of that year talking about the law of the heart and how when we understand how God has made us, he has made us in his image and in his likeness. And that when we think about, we bring about. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus teaches us, therefore I say unto you what things you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In that year, many of us have experienced the reality of that word. Many of us have purpose to believe for a thing. And as a result, that thing that we have believed for has manifested in our lives. I want to take you to Luke's gospel, chapter 17, and I want to read at verse 12. Luke 17 and verse 12. I'm not going to be long before you this morning. As Jesus entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. The reason they were afar off is because in Leviticus, the 13th chapter, it taught them and instructed them if they had the condition of leprosy, that they were to be outcast from the community, that they were to live isolated lives, that they had to put a cloth over their mouth. And anyone that got close, they had to cry, unclean, unclean. As a warning, don't approach me. Here is the story of 10 men who were lepers, who were outcast, whose life had gotten turned upside down because of a condition called leprosy. I'm not sure how long they were in that condition, but who wants to be a leper? They were outcasts, they were isolated, they could no longer commune with people. They had to live in what was called a leper's colony. And then they had to watch those who were were put there die a horrible death. And it just so happened on this occasion, as Jesus was entering into that certain village, 
10 of them came out from the shadows and dared to find Jesus. No doubt they had heard that he was on the way. And they had heard about how he had healed a woman that had an issue for a very long time. Perhaps they heard about the ruler's daughter, Jairus's daughter, that had gotten raised from the dead. Perhaps it was that other leper in the eighth chapter of Matthew that came and said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus turned around and said, I will be thou clean. And he was made whole from that very hour. Or perhaps it was that crazy man that used to run in the tombs. He didn't even know himself. He cried day and night, screaming in the tomb. And yet when he encountered Jesus, his life got straightened out. I don't know what gave them the news or who came and told them that Jesus was close by, but whoever it was, it gave them inspiration to come out from the shadow and reach out towards him. They lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. You know, when you, when you are in a pickle, when you're in a difficult situation, and when you don't know how to see your way out, I've been there before. Some of y'all have been there before. You didn't know how you was going to get out of the situation, but you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't throw up them correct prayers when we're in a tight. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When we're really being squeezed on the left and on the right and we don't know which way to go, all we can sometimes muster up is Lord have mercy. And I got news for you, that's enough to get God's attention. All you got to do is say, Lord, have mercy. Somebody ought to say that this morning. Lord, have mercy. And he hears the cry of his children. They said, Lord, have mercy on us and Jesus when he saw them. And this is wonderful because I want you to know he is attentive to your cry. You don't have to worry about whether or not he hears you. He hears you when you cry out to him. When he heard them, he said unto them a strange statement. Go show yourself to the priest. He didn't say, come here, let me lay hands on you. He said, go, go show yourself to the priest. Now, if you are a student of the word, that means something to you. Because the only time a leper was supposed to go to the priest is when he had gotten healed. When God had cleaned him up from the inside out. And yet they were still in their conditions, which means they had to walk by faith. And not by sight. And sometimes... God will drop a word in your spirit and let you know that everything is going to be all right. But when you look on the outside, things are still crazy. Well, that's when you have to learn how to continue to walk by faith and believe what God said. And every now and then, you got to tell yourself, get in the mirror and say, I believe what God said. Regardless of what I'm looking at, regardless of what I'm seeing, I believe what God said. When Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest, all he wanted was obedience. That's all he wanted from them. He didn't want to try to figure it out. That's not theirs to figure out how God going to do it. All he wanted them to do was obey his word. And if we will limp, simply obey what God says, when he says it, the miracle will begin to happen in our lives. The word has already been released. 
Go show yourself to the priest. And they turned around in obedience and they started on their journey. I don't know how far they got. Maybe it was a mile. Maybe it was two miles. I'm not sure how far they got down the road before they realized something had happened. You know, God will put it in your spirit when he's getting ready to do something tremendous in your life. Every now and then, God will give you a forewarning. Faith becomes easy. And, and your anticipation of that thing becomes closer and closer to you. And it's, it's almost as if you could taste it. And I'm sure as they were walking, stuff started happening on the inside. And they start feeling a change. There's a song uh, that, uh, uh, what was his name? Luther used to sing. A change is coming. And I understand what he's talking about. Because when you are in faith and you're believing God to do something. And you've been standing in faith for a long, long time. And you haven't thrown in the towel, but you have continued to believe in spite of your situation, all of a sudden, say all of a sudden. And then sometimes God begins to creep up on you and you feel his presence. And as his presence comes, there's fullness of joy. Talk, talk, talk to me, somebody. See, every now and then God will suddenly do it. But if he doesn't suddenly do it, then he'll gradually do it. But the point is, God is faithful to do it. And it doesn't make it in whether it comes right now or it's a process. God is faithful to do it. Sometimes God will heal you when you're walking. Say amen. He'll take away the pain. Amen. And sometimes God will work through human intervention. Say amen. And don't you think for a minute doctors aren't called by God to do what they are doing. God want to get his people well any way he can. Say amen. Amen. And so sometimes God takes us the long route, but it doesn't make a difference how he does it. Because how he does it is his business. All we got to do is know that he's going to honor his word. And as they were walking down the road, look at this. The Bible says they were cleansed. Now it had to start from the inside out. There was a rumbling on the inside that manifested on the outside. This kind of leprosy that they, they, were, they were plagued with was a skin condition that was evident. Everybody saw the legions, the pus and the blood that was running out of their sores. But all of a sudden, As they were on their way in obedience to Jesus, their skin became brand new. Hallelujah. They got their breakthrough. How many of y'all know what it feels like when your breakthrough finally comes? I'm talking about you've been waiting for a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time, amen. God got to get you in the right condition. And, and sometimes it's not, it's, not, it's not God that we're working on or waiting on. It's us. Perhaps that unforgiveness is hindering the manifestation of your blessing. I don't know what it is, but sometimes God got to deal with us before he can manifest his glory in our lives. And so, so I know what it is. I know what it feel like when that thing finally come. Boy, it makes you want to shout, talk to me, somebody. Makes you want to scream and holler. Boy, if I could just, your voice, your voice can't control it. The, the joy that wells up on the inside, it just, it just make you want to tear up something because you've been waiting for a long time. And here come God. Just at the what? Right time. And all of your waiting and your faith in and all of that has been rewarded and God has manifested his glory. 
Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Somebody ought to shout right now. Amen. Why? Because you know what it's like to be in a condition. And then God come and deliver you out of your situation. Oh, bless God. Now, here's what the text says in one of them. One of them. There was ten, but one. Now, all were cleansed. Are y'all hearing me? But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. Now he was on his way to the priest, but he turned back because the word that was released didn't come from a priest. Y'all, y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me no matter how much preaching I, I do up here. Y'all better hear God. And you better hear him for yourself. And when you hear God for yourself, it's not on the preacher anymore because you heard God, what, for yourself. And you don't have to thank a man for what God has done in your life. You give God praise, say amen. He turned back around because his, his liberation didn't come from the priest. Didn't come from the Levite. It came from the Son of God. Say amen. He turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God. He started hollering. He Negro hollered. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, he began to talk to God. Thank you, Lord. You understand what I'm talking about. Every now and then, a Negro holler will come up out of you. Come on now. It's not one of them, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. No, I'm talking about one of them sweat. You know what I'm talking about. Ugly face and all that other stuff. And you don't care about what folks say because God done did something. He done did something. He done did something. And I can't help myself. I got to just say, ah, ah, oh, hallelujah. Whether you're on tune or not, it don't make a difference because God done come through. And I needed him to do something for me. And I've been talking to him a long time. And here God shows up, hallelujah. And the Negro praise come out of me. Hallelujah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. He didn't care about who was looking, who was around him. He wasn't concerned about that. Not only did he, did he come up with a Negro praise, but he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, I, 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 want, I want you to understand something right now. It's up to you if it will be, say, it's up to me. But you better give God the credit. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah, you the one got to have faith. You got the one. You the one that got to stand the test. But don't you think you did it on your own. Help me somebody. Don't you think that you, you did it all by yourself? No, no, because there were times you wanted to quit. Let's just be real about it. And yet God gave you grace. Somebody say grace. You looked in the mirror and you said, Lord, is it ever going to happen? Well, God it assured you with a word of comfort said just hold on just a little bit longer your change is on the way are y'all hearing me and 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 so and so here even though this leper had placed his faith in the person that could do the work for him it wasn't it wasn't him beating his chest saying i believed god therefore god manifest no 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 he said thank you lord I'm still at your mercy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
And when God does do it, and he will do it, not because of you, because, because he's righteous and he's just. Don't be a fool. Learn how to fall down and give God praise. Learn how to give him credit. And the text said he was a Negro. Amen. Or he, he might have been a crack addict. I don't know. Or he may have been an alcoholic. I don't know. Or he may have been a hope monger. I don't know. But the bottom line is God did something in the man's life. Huh? And the man had sense enough to give God praise. It doesn't make a difference what you want to call him. But the bottom line is, he turned back and he turned around. And he gave God praise and he got at his feet. And he said, thank you, Lord. Well, how do you know when somebody is genuine in their worship? How do you know when they're, they have a real attitude of gratitude? I want to share this with you, then I'm going to be, be done. When you've been believing God, and I ain't talking about believing him for rent. You can get rent anywhere. But I'm talking about something that only God can do. Do, do y'all hear me? I, I, want you to, I want you to hear me. When God has done something in your life, Y'all hear me, that no one else could do. You tried to fix it on your, on your own, but it never got right. But then you surrendered it to God, and you saw God starting to work in your life. When you know God, see, some stuff, you, you, you know, even a sinner man know when God done did something. You ain't got to be super spiritual to understand, listen, if it had not been for the Lord. Do y'all hear me? I can remember when, when I was a little kid and uh, I ran into a telephone pole, cracked my head open. They thought I was going to die. My mom and my daddy started praying and God put my head back together. That was God that did that. I'm not suffering no long-term damage from that accident. See, something God, it take God to do. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, it took God to do what he did. You see, do y'all understand what I'm saying? And when I look back on my life and I remember how God has intervened, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. See, some stuff, you know it was God that did it. See, no, it wasn't me. No, 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 no. God intervened. Say amen. And he did something that couldn't nobody else do but God. And when you realize that, every now and then, you need to give God some real praise. Now, now listen to me. I'm praising him right now for what he did when he brought me to Tinker Air Force Base or excuse me, went to off of Air Force Base, uh, Nebraska in 1980. Why? Because I wanted to get to that girl right there. You see what I'm saying? I was believing God to get back to o uh, Omaha, Nebraska at off of Air Force Base. And for me, when God gave me them orders back to Omaha, I said, praise God, the Red Sea just got opened up for me. Y'all not hearing me. I got in Mount Nebo and I danced my dance, hallelujah. Why? Because I knew that girl right there was going to be mine. I was back on, back in town. Couldn't turn me down now because I'm here. Say, somebody say amen. amen. Well, 38 years later, she's still sitting right next to me. Hallelujah. And I'm giving God praise for what he did for me alone, alone, alone. I still haven't gotten over it. Y'all not hearing me. I'm still happy about it. See, y'all, 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 y'all hear what I'm trying to say to you. Listen, there's so many things that we can go back and think about. Hallelujah. I got a boy in the booth in the back, in the corner in the dark. Somebody, you know what I'm talking about. 
He's in the booth in the back in the corner in the dark. He's here because God rescued him when he was a baby. Had gotten stricken with spinal meningitis and put him on the critically ill list in the United Kingdom. Didn't expect for him to live. But here 30 some years later, he's still here. Hallelujah. See, some stuff, some stuff only God could do. And I'm not, I'm not over it yet. Every now and then. Come on now. I walk to myself and God will hit me with that reality. Don't forget what I did for you back there. And every now and then I think about it. And it causes me to say, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. For what you did way back when. Hallelujah. But, but listen to me. Here's, here's what I'm trying to get you to, to understand. When God does something, when it's real and you know it's him and nobody could do it but him, it will cause your direction in life to change. Say amen. <laughs> listen, the leper was headed towards the priest, but he, he knew where the word had come from and he changed his direction and went back to Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Say it'll change the direction in your life. Yeah, see when God gave me orders back to off it, it changed the direction in my life. When God healed my baby, come on, talk to me. Changed direction in my life. So many things God has done, and what it does is it changes your direction. Somebody say amen. Listen, when you get delivered from something, come on, that been that dog in your step for a long time. Y'all, y'all don't hear me. See, I know what I know what it means to be addicted to something. But I also know what it means to be set free from something. Hallelujah. When you don't have to deal with that thing anymore, that vice that has held you captive, hallelujah, you can stand up and you can give God a Negro praise. Hallelujah. 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 See, I'm talking about what God has done for me. I don't know what he done for you, but you got to figure it out. Every now and then, you need to just give God some praise for what he's already done. Y'all. Are y'all hearing me? See, 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 if it had not been for the Lord on my side, if my son would have died, I would have been crippled. Y'all not hearing me. I'd have been messed up. If, if he'd not sent me back to office, I wouldn't have been able to be with that beautiful black woman right there. I'd have been messed up. Y'all not hearing me. See, God know how to rescue us. Like only he can rescue us. And when you know God done stepped in, and intervene. You ought to give him a Negro praise. Amen. You ought to give him a Negro praise. Well, not only will it change your direction in life, but it'll move you to glorify God without shame. I don't care who listening to me. And I don't care how I sound. I wish I could hoop in, 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 on tune. But I don't care about hooping on tune. In other, when, I, when it's time for me to praise God, brother, I just holler. I just holler. Spit, spit come out. And my, my hair get messed up. and Sweat run off. My, why? Because I'm not trying to impress y'all. See, the praise, the glory belongs to God. And, and everything he put in me screams out and cries out, Thank you, Lord. Why? Because I know if it wasn't for him. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If it wasn't for him, where would I be? See, God intervened. He pulled me out of the shadows of life and brought me out into the bright day. And I'm grateful. Say amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. Somebody knows what I'm talking about this morning. But not only that, not only does it it cause you to give God praise, but it'll cause you to do one or two things. You either fall down or you'll stand up for him. It, it, it depends upon your environment. 
If you're by yourself, you'll, you'll fall down on your face and you'll give God praise. And if you're in a crowded uh, room of people, sometimes you'll just stand up and say, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. I, see, I'm thinking about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, what? Hallelujah for all that he's done for me. Listen, listen to me. One or two things happen. Your body got to get involved in your praise. More than just your mouth. Your body will get involved. Sometimes when you think about how good God had been to you, sometimes it'll make you want to dance. And, and listen to me. I ain't talking about them, them, them pre- or worked out dance steps that you did that you learned from watching Sister Susie Sue and all that other stuff and, uh, and all that and all that. No, I'm talking about you'll get to moving and you won't know how you're moving. All of a sudden stuff will just come on you and you'll just start jumping up and down, hollering and screaming and giving God praise and then sometimes it'll just make you cry can't do nothing you just Lord thank you. you you just start thinking about how good God being and, and how unfaithful you being and in spite of it all God still came through and manifested his glory and that's when you say you know I just got to do better I, I just got to do better listen if you're here this morning and you know what I'm talking about I want you to stand to your feet Listen, we, we owe God a genuine attitude of gratitude. How many of y'all thankful today? 